Hey guys, Max here. I recently started playing V Rising and I've been having a lot of fun with this game. So I decided to make like a beginner's tips and tricks video, showcase a few quality of life things, things like that. Uh, so first of all, spoilers. Uh, if you're interested in V Rising and you wanna know more about it, make sure you subscribe to the channel down below. I'll be making a lot of videos on this game because it's just that fun. I also been streaming it over on Twitch. I've been having a blast with you guys <laughs> with all the initial reactions of the bosses and things like that. So good stuff there. I'll put that link down in the description below if you're interested. Let's get into the tips. So the first tip that I have is before you make your game, go into the advanced settings to this first tab right here and scroll down just a little bit until you get to items, teleport bound items, okay? And this is going to be turned on by default. I recommend turning this off, okay? And if you turn this off, this means that you will be allowed to teleport with different minerals in the game that you would not uh, usually be allowed to teleport with, like copper ore, for example. If you leave this on, it means you have to walk the copper ore all the way back to your base before you can kind of smelt it, right? So this is personal preference, but I would just go into the event settings and just turn this off and then have a look at all the other advantage settings if you like, uh, but this was kind of the main one that stuck out for me, so I definitely recommend uh, turning this off. The next tip is once you're inside the game, go to your options menu here, and this might be a little different if you're on console, I'm on PC. But up here at the top, there's controls. And then the first option here is keyboard and mouse bindings. Click on that. And there's two bindings that I like to change. First is the auto run, okay? Uh, you can leave the default setting here or change it. Uh, what I like to do is just add a second button on my mouse. So for auto run there. And then if you scroll down just a little bit to general, there's an interact and pickup button here. F is the default for this, and this will open doors and chests and pick up items off the ground. But I tend to find that it's a little bit clunky while I'm trying to use the D key to move during a fight or something like that. So I uh, bound a second uh, mouse button on this as well. So I would encourage you to check out the rest of the key bindings in here, but these two stood out the most for quality of life. Next, we're gonna talk about how to make different rooms in your castle, okay? So I've got this little area closed off for a room, but it needs a doorway, okay? And so whether I use the castle entrance or the wood entrance, I need to fill this in and now it officially becomes a room. I don't have to put a door in if I don't want to. And then for the floors, I need to pick which uh, crafting station I'll be using uh, in order to uh, choose the floor. So this, we're gonna do the workshop floor, which is the first one that you, uh, you can do. And you just pick which floor you want and you just slap it right here on the four floors. And now the grinder, the sawmill, and the workbench will all get benefits if I place them in this room because it's enclosed off and all the floors match, okay? So make sure you do that for each workstation that you pick up throughout the game. And if you're curious about what the final product could look like, here's what mine is. I've got the grinder and the sawmill in here with my two workbenches. And when you interact with any of these up here at the top, you will be able to tell if it's activated or not. The first one is if there's a roof above my head, which is all four walls enclosed with floors. And then this one is the type of floor. And you'll find more types of floors throughout the game when you kill bosses and talk to vendors and things like that. The next tip is about gearing. So it's pretty straightforward in this game. Your gear level is a reflection of your damage uh, versus bosses. So if I'm gear level 16 and I try to fight a gear level 32 boss, I'm gonna get my butt whipped, okay? But if I equipped more items, see how this uh, chest piece is item level two? If I move it up here, it's gonna go from 16 to 18, right? Same with the legs, item level two, 18 to 20. And so you wanna basically keep crafting new gear throughout the game to increase your gear level so that you can uh, have an easier time with bosses. Uh, now, you'll notice on some of my gear, uh, there's an exclamation point and my durability is really low. I need bone and rugged hide right there to repair this. And all I have to do is hover over the item and push the middle mouse button and it repairs it, okay? So very easy to repair. You just need to collect the resources that it says here, and then you just you know push the middle mouse button and you're good to go. Speaking of gear, we're gonna need recipes to be able to progress our gear, right? And so uh, I like to visit the merchant camp here. There's two of them in the first act. There's one over here on the east and another over here on the west. And there's these four shady dealers, right? And they'll sell like potions and fish and gems and things like that. But the one we wanna pay attention to is this shady book dealer, okay? So you're gonna find recipes as you kill bosses and loot chests and things like that. But if you are having a hard time finding that last piece of armor or the next weapon upgrade, if you visit the book dealer here, he will sell different uh, armor piece recipes, right? Like the Marauder vest for melee, warlock leggings if you wanna go the castle, 
crosser route. He's got the, you know, copper spear, copper crossbow, things like that. And sometimes he'll even sell like flooring and castle recipes for like decorations. They respawn every 55 minutes. This guy just respawned uh, with his stock. And so if you are looking for maybe the warlock gloves, right? And you come here and, oh man, it's only the chest and the legs. Just come back in an hour and maybe he'll have the gloves for you again. But just make sure you keep an eye out for when you're killing bandits and looting their chests. You want to uh, save up these copper coins so that you can afford these prices. Now, as you make your way through act one, you are going to eventually come across uh, a boss called Finn the Fisherman. And he is going to teach you how to create a fishing pole. And sometimes you'll find these in chests, uh, but usually you got to make it yourself. And then you want to keep an eye out as you're running around for these little bodies of water right here. And then all you have to do is just pull out the fishing pole and aim into it and cast with the left uh, mouse button. And you'll see these little flutters of water uh, come up, but you want to wait for that big one. And as soon as the big one hits, that's when you want to yank it out of the water really quickly. And it just throws the fish right next to you. Do not sleep on this, okay? I waited until act two to even try this and I regret it because I feel like fish is just a little more difficult to farm quickly and reliably based on, you know, like these copper and uh, tree and stone all, that's all over the place, right? As you run through bodies of water, you'll notice there isn't many fishing holes. Like for example, I know this one's kind of small, but it only had the one. So do not sleep on this. As soon as you get the pole, carry it around with you. And if you're ever running near a body of water and you see that, just stop and pull a fish out. You will thank me later when you start to need these things for other things in the game. The next tip is about storage management. So let's say you just got back from an adventure and your bags are just full of stuff, bones and wood and stone, and you come to these boxes here and you just wanna throw them all in there uh, and but also keep it organized at the same time. When you open a chest, sometimes the items will have this green border around them. That means that the item is already stored in the chest in some capacity. So you don't have to just memorize what chest has what, and you're like, oh, do I put this in here? Nope. It'll just show you right here on the green border. So you can just right click on them and it'll dump them in the chest. Notice how this cloth right here doesn't have a green border, but when I move to the next chest over, now it does because I store all my cloth in here. So I right click on that. Notice how these don't have a green border because they're not stored in this chest in any way. So if you just don't want to memorize where everything's stored, just line up a bunch of chests. And then when you come back, just keep opening them and look for that green border. And you'll be able to just dump all of your items in there quickly and then just move on to the next thing that you wanted to do. Now, the next tip is about your blood pool. Okay. So this little uh, circle down here with the red uh, fluid in it, that's your blood pool. And you can see I have 6.4 out of 10 liters. Any time that I drink a creature or a human's blood and I let the entire process go all the way to the end, it will fill your entire blood meter, okay? So if you're just down to you know a liter and you're messing around in your castle and you just need to have blood to survive, I'd just like to go outside and just find a deer or a bear or a wolf and just drink their blood real quick and just fill it back up. Now, as far as gathering resources, I like to look for workers uh, because if I can find a worker that's got 10, 20, 15, you know, percent and then drink their blood, I will get the benefit of resource. Uh, I'll get more resources and it will help me knock down the resources faster, things like that. For example, this one I have here, creature. If I were to drink a creature's blood of 50%, I would get, you know, the, the movement speed, the increased sun resistance rating and the damage reduction. And if I ended up getting one with 100%, I would get all five of the bonuses, right? So uh, depending on your situation of what you're going to do, if you're just building in your castle, just go eat a deer. If you're going to go uh, on a wood stone copper mining spree try to find a worker that way it helps you with your activity for about an hour and a half if you're going to go fight a boss maybe look for a warrior or rogue and as you see enemies you can hover over them and this is a warrior 13 this is a brute 5 this is a warrior 90 that's a really good one so if i was about to go fight a boss i would probably drink this warrior's blood and get most of the benefits of it and then run off and go fight that boss real quick okay so that's pretty much how the blood pool works uh you can also use this uh to heal yourself so if i was really low on health i can hold down my left control uh, button and uh use the blood mend here and it will drain your blood as you heal, okay? So that's pretty much how the blood pool works. Uh, just keep that in mind depending on which activity you're gonna do. Now, the final tip I have for you today is how to get resources a little bit earlier than intended. So let's say, for example, you are about to fight the next boss, but you, you're you struggling and you wish you could upgrade your gear, but in order to upgrade your gear, you need leather, but you haven't killed the boss yet 
to learn the crafting station to make it. You could come up to this bandit trapper camp and get some leather here. If you hover over the different areas, it will tell you the type of resources that you're likely to get in that area. So if I came up here and got some leather and upgraded one of my armor pieces, maybe it gives me that edge to fight that boss a little better. If I come over here, I can get whetstones for free instead of having to craft them. Or maybe I just wanna go on a, on a large plant a farming spree instead of running all over the place i can come over here and hover over this and it gives me snow flower fire blossom blood rose so if you're looking for something specific and you can't craft it yet or you want to kind of narrow in your search on farming stuff just hover over these areas and it will kind of tell you exactly what you're expected to get in that area. And this will be the same throughout the rest of the game. And I've used this several times where, man, I can't, I can't make this next piece of gear because I don't have this part and I'm three bosses away before I get it. But over here in this little town, I can farm it a little bit and get that little bit of a edge for the next boss. So keep that in mind when you're looking for specific items for your, for your next craft. And that covers all the tips that I have for you in this video. I tried to keep it as short as I could, but as spoilerly free as I could. <laughs> uh, so if you feel like I deserve it, hit the like button down below, subscribe to the channel for more vampire content, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.